Today we're gonna learn how to do a dip. I don't have access to a dip bar, so I had to improvise. So I'm using some steps, and I put a pair of pallets on top of it. So let's start with the setup. The dip bars, or the pallets in this case, should be just outside your shoulders. So you don't want them to be too far out. That would make the exercise very difficult. So I would recommend find the dip bar you can adjust. That is about shoulder width apart, or a little bit wider but not too much. Now we establish the width of the bars, let's jump onto it. So the next step, can you hold this position or your body start dropping? If it starts dropping, you might have to go back to a previous episode when I did the video about the weak links of the shoulders and how to work on your depression. Once you're comfortable with that progression, then you can move on to further challenge that exercise when you let your body drop and bring it back. Remember guys, this was the shoulder depression drill. So once you can comfortably hold yourself on the dip bars with a deeper shoulders, then we can move on to partial reps. Come up to the dip bar, keep in that depression, and you start doing partial reps for your dip. The next thing to do is to find out where you're losing that dip. So if you come up here and do your partial reps, you see it fine, but if you come a little bit lower, you just lose it. Take note of that depth of the exercise and implement some holds. So you're gonna come down and that's your progression, hold it there. Hold it, hold it, and press up from it. Work on your negatives, trying to come down as slow as you can. Wherever your speed increases, that means your lack of strength in that area, go back to it and just try to hold that position for time. So now you're increasing the time under tension at the weakest point, which is the hardest point of your dip. Once you get comfortable holding that hard position for time, the next time you're gonna be able to come lower and maybe that's when you're going to lose it. But then you can reassess, find that point. You're gonna come down to negative and hold it there. It is really important to monitor yourself, to record yourself, so then you know exactly where you need to gain more strength. So if I show this from the side, let's say you come up to your dip, you can do partial reps, pretty well until this point, but if you come lower, that you just lose it. Let's practice that weak link. So now come down, that's the one, and try to hold it, hold it, and you can either release, or if you have any strength left, push back up. Come down, pause, push back up. The more you do this exercise, the more range you're going to unlock in the dip and eventually you can go lower and lower until you can start in the bottom position and then you can increase the time holding the dip in the bottom position. When you get to that point, you definitely increase your strength to do full reps. But there are also other methods. So now I have three sand bells underneath my feet. That can be your starting position. So if I come up, remember depression, lower it down. I just touch the sandals, press up. If you're comfortable with this one, remove one sandbell. Now from here, my body's lower. I'm almost in a 90 degree angle. So I can press from here, come down. So now I'm doing partial reps while I'm keeping everything really safe because I have these sandbells as a safety, so my body's not gonna just drop onto the floor. Something that's more measurable, how low I can go in my dip. And as the week progresses, you come back to this exercise, try to challenge yourself. Either do another rep, or try to go lower. And pair that up with those holds. And eventually, you can come down, and this is the last sandbell now. And you can come down. Once again, almost 90. I press off from it. And as you get stronger, you're gonna be able to come all the way down and push up. If you don't have a high enough dip bar, you might have to improvise a little bit by let's say bending your knees. So if I want to increase my depth, I have to bend my knees slightly so I can come even further down until my feet touches the ground and then push up from it. So now we're using partial reps, holds and negatives. Three of the best methods, in my opinion, to unlock any exercise in calisthenics.
As for the mistakes, you never want to do your dips in a shrugged position. You need to be able to depress those shoulders at all times when you do your dips to avoid any injuries. The other mistake to avoid is the flared elbows. You want to keep your elbows in as close to your body as possible to avoid any injuries in your shoulders. If you're interested in daily workouts and programs, check out gym32.co.uk and hopefully you just unlocked your first dip.